Hello folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your weekly T.A. Wrap, where we take a look at these markets and we do it from the old classical perspective, each time asking ourselves what happened last week and what does it tell us about the coming one. I do the show once a week. It's every Sunday night live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time here from the base of the beautiful Rocky Mountains, and today I'm actually pre-recording the show at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. 11 a.m. Eastern Time uh, for your reviewing pleasure as I won't be around this evening. As far as uh, year to date, what have the markets done? Well, you can see, you know, we've got uh, S&P's, NASDAQ near the highs, Dow's trailing, and Russell actually negative on the year as of today. Elsewhere, what have we got here in the markets? So let's take a look at these markets. So we'll start with the S&P 500. You know, on Friday, we're going to look at that daily view to start with. On Friday, we had basically a takeaway bar. Big down day on Thursday, the geopolitical events, and the dip buyers, uh, you know, jumped all over that, took it right back up. If you think about the S&P 500 and actually most of these markets, you really have some range trades going on. You got a range up here now at the highs. You got a range back up up underneath it. It came down, tested into that range, that lower range, was unwilling or shall we say unable to break down, took it right back the other way. Now we're going to try to test the top of the range again. If you look at it on a weekly basis, you know, these markets are really just a little sideways digestion type action that we saw earlier in the year. Here's the December time frame, same sort of thing, but then you had the run up in January and then you did the digestion thing, eventually tried to break down on the S&Ps and then flipped around and has run up ever since. So from a weekly perspective, if you take and look at the ranges, you actually had a range here. And let me see, we could actually draw this just slightly different. We could incorporate this range and then the one now that's kind of above it. And so you can see this could take us up to about 2,000. There are some S&P targets still out there at uh, 2022, if it were to get that high. Uh, that's on a weekly basis still sitting out there. Uh, but you know, we're in this higher range now. We're still well above the prior range. We'd have to get back down uh, into the 1900s to get back down into that range. So from an S&P point of view, uh, this market still looks pretty strong. Now, if we, dive, if we look at the divergence with the Russell, now the Russell had a takeaway bar, it was a full one, strikes back up, takes away the entire negativity from the prior day. The Russell also has some ranges. There's a top range up here, the lower range back below it, it had broken into the lower range. Now it's trying to get back into the top range. That's the test come Monday morning. There's also a retest regenerate that had previously taken place. Now we're going to come back and do it again. So the Russell looks to try to test back into the higher range come Monday. It's been the weakest one. It's the one we've been watching uh, for uh, short-term tells because it's a broader swath. If you think about uh, of what the market has done as we came into earnings. It's rewarded the large cap companies and it's punished the small caps. And for the most part, you can see that with this huge divergence that's been taking place. You've got the large range up here, the lower range down there. You can see it tries to trade into it on the weekly, stays above it on the weekly. That says it's going to try to test it up, up a little bit more and we'll see how far it can get back up. But the Russell, a very different story when you look at it and you compare it to the S&P 500. This one's range bound the whole year, actually since December. S&P's is actually worked higher and that's reflected in the um, year to date numbers that we saw as we started the show. Let's look over at the um, sectors and just flip through these and see how they're shaping up on a weekly basis. Let me pull the daily out of the way so we're only looking at the weeklies. Here's the transports. Transports still strong as a bull. 
Uh, they just keep rising. Uh, they're on, on, a, on a basis of the weekly. These are starting to set up ABCD structures or attempting to set up ABCD structures uh, to the upside. Uh, this one actually doesn't have one yet. Well, it does. It has it from here. So here's the ABCD structure that's just getting started. So you're starting to see ABCD structures on the upside come back in on the weekly basis in these markets. So the SOX, same sort of thing. And I'm looking to see if we have an ABCD structure. We don't. So the SOX is just consolidating up here at the top. Nothing wrong with that one. Still looks fine. Uh, XLB. XLB is actually struggling a bit. It looks like that one will trade back into this lower support zone. XLE was the same. Uh, looks like it's going to trade back into the support zone or try to. But right now it's in this higher range and just consolidating five weeks up there. XLF tried to get over the highs, failed, and then shot back up on Friday. The, XLI, the XLF is over these prior swing point highs. It's done multiple bars of retest regens, and it's staying in the higher range right now. That higher range, if you project it, would be up into this area. So XLF still, uh, actually, even though on a, on a daily it's struggling to get over the tops on a weekly still looks pretty strong. XLI has been one of the weaker ones. This one is actually transitioned on a daily. This was actually transitioned to bearish, but if you look at it on a weekly, it doesn't look very bearish here, does it? Maybe it's going to test back into the support zone. Um, this one is a is one of the uh, ones that's struggling the most, but even there, you can see it's just a slight fade. Strongest one, XLK. Uh, Google came out with earnings on Thursday night, traded up, another big cap. The big caps are what holds this up and keeps pushing. This one has another ABCD structure in place too. Uh, we can see it here. And that one is trying to stretch on higher. Got some big names this week, Facebook, Microsoft, Verizon, AT&T, uh, Apple, Texas Instruments, there's a lot of big names coming out this week going to affect the technology and the markets in general. Uh, earnings are going to be a big part of this week. Exogenous events, uh, geopolitical also. And there's a bunch of PMI numbers coming out Wednesdays and Thursdays that's going to have a tell. XLP consolidating. This one um, really not bad, but just consolidating. XLU has been trying to trade down. That looks like just a big range trade on the weekly. Really, um, really just a large range trade after, you know, a breakout. And so you've got, you know, a range trade almost echo distance of the prior one. It's been trading up in that and still trading in it. These, you know, when you look at them, they're not bearish structures. They're still strong bullish structures. Even though it looked like we were going to get a retrace, so far the market's just unwilling to come in whatsoever. I'm pulling up the XLV now and, and projecting the ranges on it. You can see a lot of these now are suggesting potentially higher ranges. Uh, XLV being one of them, test back in, unwilling to go back into the lower range. Those are signs of health when you see that. And XLY, consumer discretionary. Uh, this one is actually just trying to get above the top range right now. Range here, range below it. Get rid of that. And let's draw in that lower range from here to there. You can see if it does break higher, another range on top. But right now it's testing the tops, testing this high, trying to get over it. And actually hitting it with pretty decent volume. So. Um, I don't see anything here on the sectors that tell us that we should be overly worried about the health of this market. And that's exactly what we saw on Friday. Uh, I really thought we were going to get some follow through on Friday, and I was totally wrong. Um, you know, the power of this market just continues and uh, is unwilling to break down. 
EEM, the emerging markets, right at the highs, hanging at the highs, trying to break over them. Um, yeah, just still, still staying up there. FXE tried to break down and was unwilling to. That low was 133.20. I'm looking at the currencies. This is the weekly. Got underneath it, volume lighter, back over the top. This one's going to try to bounce now. And if you look at it on a daily, you can see that low, 133.44. That's going to be the retest, regen right off the bat. It's not a very wide price spread bar, and it's coming back at it fairly quickly. Uh, so the probabilities of getting up and above it are reasonably high. Which takes me to the dollar. Let's see what the dollar looks like. The dollar is actually trying to put an ABCD structure in place on the upside. It wouldn't be a huge one, but it would be a change in trend here. We'll take it back to these highs. Hey. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Uh, my allergies are kicking in. So that would be a, a trade back up into this high. Uh, the first thing, of course, is to get over this high and try and change the trend. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, gold and silver. So gold, let's get those off. Gold is, is actually trying to set up an ABCD structure as well. How much it pulls back is the question. It could pull back as deep as here. Uh, assuming it, it only stops here, you can see that cakes it up to the highs. Uh, that would be a very bullish structure if it starts to move. If it pulls back deeper, it's not going to get as high. Uh, but gold, so far, is still looking pretty good, even though it had a lot of gyrations. I'll pull up the daily. Even though it had a lot of gyrations this week, did test those tops. Looked like silver was uh, suggesting we were trying to go higher. Uh, it did gap down. Did trade off the lows, uh, open bar, so that's positive. But um, was struggling. Silver, uh, if we look at it on the daily, you can see uh, it tested the low back underneath it, over it. That also looks like it's going to try to trade higher, and here's that weekly. Silver finally gets a weekly bar that trades down after, what, we got six bars up. Uh, volume pretty decent as it comes back in here, but not as heavy, but it is into the bar, so silver will need to turn around and head higher to get the commodities, uh, the precious metals moving. Bonds, bonds were trying to get over the highs on the daily. Let me pop the daily up first. Uh, they're up there at that swing point high. It's uh, 115.19. Uh, that's the real test. They hit it with some decent volume. Uh, that's also the weekly. Gets over that. That's a big move. That could set up another ABC structure to the upside. If you look at the world markets, world markets actually are doing pretty well. Um, if Asia itself uh, looking pretty strong. We'll start actually with Brazil. This one is really starting to surge. Gets over the swing point highs. Uh, Brazil looks as if it's going to try uh, to trade higher. May get a little pullback first, uh, but looks pretty strong. If we go over to Europe, uh, Europe, this is the weekly on the CACs. Uh, building out some sort of a you know a classical TA sense, a bearish flag, uh, but it's coming into some fairly good volume here. So uh, this one may test a little bit lower, but it looks like it's going to hold for now. On the FTSE, same sort of thing. It's in that top range, so you kind of have two ranges here, and it's still holding the higher one. FTSE looks like it's going to try to trade higher, and this is despite. You know, the, the two back-to-back -back weeks of contagion that was one week, and then now uh, the uh, situation in the Ukraine that was an issue. You can see the equidistance holding, this is the DAX, holding that top range right at it. This one also looks like it's going to try to bounce uh, into the next week. And that's despite all those conditions over in Europe uh, that are against it. Hang Seng, 
T-test will be this high. It looks like it will attack it this week. Uh, it's got a lot of volume there, so I don't know that it will get over it, but it would have an ABCD structure. The Hang Seng itself wants to go back and test the highs. So all in all, oh, and let's look at the last two, uh, Japan also um, sitting at highs, trying to break over them, still hasn't been able to yet, but will probably eventually. And Taipei comes off, it's gonna get support at the bottom of this bar, and it's not very far away. I would think that comes this week. World markets still look pretty good. Europe struggling more so than Asia. Uh, domestic markets looks rangy and top, uh, choppy. Uh, the sectors still look pretty good. If you're looking at them from a weekly perspective, from an intermediate term perspective, they don't look bad at all. If you look at them from a daily perspective, it looks like some uh, choppy range action uh, coming for the next week. Okay, well that's it for this show. A little bit lighter, there's no questions of course because I'm doing it out of hours, but uh, um, you know, overall these markets continue to amaze. Uh, they, they, the dip buyers run in at any possible chance of getting prices cheaper. They buy them up. Large cap stocks continue to hold this market higher. A lot of earnings this week. A lot of economic data in Wednesday, Thursday time frame. And, of course, the geopolitical situations that could have affected. Uh, all of that suggests that we're going to have some choppy trading uh, in the coming week, but with probably a slightly bullish bias. That's it for this week. Thanks for joining me. Take care, and I'll see you next time.